Okay, I think you've been very patient. Um, we've got to the point where we've got our people and moving around, but we really need to infect um, someone in this scenario. Um, we need to get the spread of infection being shown, um, as that's the, that's the key part of all of this. So this video will just be focusing on um, introducing an infected person and making sure that when they contact uh, have contact with another person, they infect them as well. So how are we going to accomplish this? Well, at the moment, a person, if they are down as being healthy, um, we've got them being blue. So the property about the person, their colour will be blue. Um, if they're infected, we're going to choose a different colour to go for. Um, we could say red. Red could show uh, an infection. So I'm going to make a new um, a new method, public method, and just making it void called infect. And what infect will do, it will set the color equal to red. Excellent. So when we call that, this person will be infected um, and their colour will change to red. We don't need to change anything else with regards to that because when we go and draw people, we already use the colour. So it's just a, a case of changing what colour we were using. So each person initially is set to, it's just set to blue in the constructor. Colour is set to blue. But if we call this method, the colour will be set to red. So they'll draw with a solid red brush rather than a blue brush. Now, nobody's currently infected um, because we haven't called this. And we also want to make sure that we infect when a collision has been found. Um, so we used... Uh, detect collision, draw person, uh, sorry, detect collision, uh, get distance and collision, all to indicate whether they were, um, whether they were in contact with each other. And we did things like working out what the distance is and what the overlap is. So that we made sure that um, our people were able to shift away from each other and change the velocity that they were traveling at. Um, the thing to add to this is if we have detected a collision, we need to ask if um, the colour of this person, of the person that we're looking at, is equal to colour blue. Uh, sorry, colour red. Because if this person is colour red, they must be infected. Therefore, the person that they've just made contact with, and we send through as a parameter, that person must become infected. We must infect them. So it's just going to call the subroutine we just made, the method we made, um, changing it to being a red colour person, if the colour of this particular instance of the person is red. We're going to change the person that we've detected a collision with. They must be red as well. And that should be all the changes that we have to make to the person class. <coughs> now, if you run it now, um, we still won't see anything different because Currently, we haven't infected anybody yet. So we've got a choice to make. Um, we've got an unlucky person um, in the array that's going to be infected. Um, so we're going to have to choose one person from these randomly generated ones to become infected. Um, the place to do that would be reset, so that when we reset it, um, everybody would return to being blue because we're making a new instance of people, of a, of a person. 
um, the new instance of a person is blue. Um, and it would make sense to either go for the first person or the last person in this in this people array as the one that we're going to infect at first. Um, so let's choose the last person in the array. Let's go for the last person in the array. So that for loop ensures that everybody is <coughs> create, we've created an instance of all the people, place them in the array. And uh, we've made sure that we're placing them so they're not touching each other initially. And after we've done it for all the people that we want to do it for, the length of the array, which is controlled by our track bar that we made. Um, we're going to go for the last person in the array. So it'll be people at position. Uh, it's going to be whatever the track bar's value is. Minus one because our array starts at zero. So if our, our track bar value was 250, um, we would be looking at array position 249 to be the highest one. And the lowest position would be zero. And we're going to call that subroutine that we made in the person class infect. So this one person in that array, we're going to infect. So if we run this time, what we should see is one person will be colored red. <coughs> because when we reset, we set everybody to being a blue, but then that one person we infect. And we see it, there they are. There's one person there that's infected. And that's going to be whatever the uh, amount of people we choose. So if we choose just one person, that's the one person that's going to be infected. Um, let's go for four, uh, seven people. Seven people around, one person infected. All the way up to 500. 500, one infected. And if we press play, hopefully when the collision occurs, um, it will identify, as we as we coded a few moments ago, um, when we detect a collision, uh, when we do collisions here. So when a collision has been detected, we check the distance, check the overlap, change the position, sort the velocities, and if the person that we're currently um, looking at is the red person, um, it's going to infect the ones that it's in contact with. Um, let's see if that happens. Okay, so we've got a few more infected. That infection's starting to spread now. Spark's starting to spread pretty rapidly now. And more and more big people are infected. It's spreading across across our form. And we're going to end up in a situation where everybody is infected. And it really didn't take long for that to occur. Um <coughs> One thing I did notice as we went through is that sometimes there was contact made between um, the two circles or the two people, but it didn't actually infect them. So if we press reset, hopefully we'll see that again. Um, it just so happened that the infection started behind this area. Yeah, there's there's some there's some times where we are um, registering the collision. But it's not infecting. We'll run it a few more times for us to see. There's definitely some collisions in there that aren't causing an infection. Now, I anticipate the reason for this is um, that we are um, <coughs> we are only checking the colour of the first person. When we are checking these collisions and because we change the positions of them and set them apart and change the velocities um, if the person we've connected with collided with isn't infected it would mean that um, or the person that we collided with is infected um, but we are not because this won't run 
it's not going to infect that other person. So we, we're going to make sure that that, um, that that happens by including um, an else if, else if, and, the, and we need to get hold of the person's colour. <coughs> we need to find out if that person has been um, infected. So if the if the person that if if the one that we're looking at right now is red, we infect the other person. If the alternatively, it must be blue. Else, if the person we're looking at their colour is equal to red, then we want to infect this instance of the person, this class. So we just want to call infect. And if we run it now, we should see that any any contact between an infected person and another another person will will get a um, will cause an infection. So we'll leave it with this random one, 250. We've got our infected person down here. Um, and we just look out for any collisions where they haven't infected. And you see this time it's spread a lot quicker. A total infection there. Press reset and watch it again. That infection spreads incredibly quickly. This is simulating what's happening without social distancing. We're all coming into contact. Everybody's infected. Um, just looking at this, I think I want to start having a counter for infected and non-infected people, just so I... Um, I know for sure when everyone's infected and I like to see the numbers go up and later on when we do some graphing we're going to be calculating those numbers anyway and um, so that's what we'll do next we'll make sure that we get a counter on the screen so we know who's infected who's not infected and sorry 500 and the only reason this one is, is slower is because of that inefficiency in our um, collision software, but the spread is ridiculously fast. Spread. Incredibly fast. We'll reduce it down to um, 355. Let's see that in action. Spreading, 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 spreading. Some of you might already be aware if you actually go and resize this midway through because of the way we handle collision um, we've handled it based on the size of the form we can actually make these spread out a little bit more so we can have our 500 and we can have them appear all over our form because our boundary is the edge of the form so we'll do our 500 here uh, collision and watch the infection spread. <coughs> Quite mesmerizing to watch. Uh, it looks like everyone's infected. Um, we are going to do a counter in a second to um, see that properly. But if we just take it down to 250, trackbar could do with being extended to make it easier to pick, pick the numbers up. Can 
use the key, so that helps. Um, 256, I like it, it's a nice binary number. Reset, we've got the infection there. And we'll see it file around. Excellent, we get the idea. So um, we're going to include our counters next. <coughs> In order to make our counters, um, we're going to go back onto the form design. I'm going to move things around a little bit. Um, we're going to copy, uh, not copy, but um, select all of the things on our form there and kind of drag them down a little bit. And add some labels to this. Um, again, just make sure that you've got the form selected when you go into the toolbox. Um, and we want some labels. So we're going to have a label for healthy people, and we'll probably have that colored in blue. So we're going to change the properties of this stuff. So, um, healthy. Count. And do I need to count? No, it's, it's kind of assumed. So we'll put the colon and then leave a space ready to put the number. Um, because we're our default is to have 250 people, um, I'll put 249 in here. And um, because we're always going to infect that last person. Healthy people to 249, and let's just change the font of it. I, I much prefer it to be a bit bold. And we're going to have the color of it be um, a blue color. And just normal blue. Because I want it to match in with the style of having the people being blue when they're healthy. Um, and we want to have a good name for this label, sensible naming system, um, health, the people, shorten it down, PPL, uh, LBL, the label. That's my healthy people label. And then we're going to have our infected people. Again, changing the same sort of things. Um, infected people colon and it'll start off as being one again <coughs> changing the settings so that um, we've got our font it's a bit bold and our four color we're going to make red again just like with our infected people and where's red there we go red and we can play around with the positioning of these things and um, that's essentially where i'd like it to be for now Okay, so where are we going to um, update this information? Well, it would make sense to be updating it within the timer. Um, the timer can help us to keep count of who's infected and who's not. So we already got a for loop to go through each and every person. Um, so we can have a, have a couple of counters. Um, Healthy count and set that initial to zero and integer for infected count and set that to zero each time. So as we go through each of these people, we can also do another little check, or we can we can make sure that we check for if the person has been infected. Um, so we can make a method inside of person to return that information to us. 
because we can't have direct access to um, color. Um, so p dot, we don't get an option here of color. In fact, you'll notice we don't get any of the properties appearing here. And that's because even though we haven't written it here, the access modifier for all of these properties is private. So I can explicitly put it there, explicitly put it there. Um, so we can't access them from outside of the class. Mm -hmm. There's three um, access modifiers that we'll be concerned with. Private, only accessible in the class it's in. Public, accessible from outside the class, hence where we can do um, a person dot or p dot in this case, an object dot, and you can find all of the all of the public methods. So there's infect that we've used it used before. Um, so private only accessible within the class, public accessible outside the class, and there's one final one called protected, which we won't use today. But protected is where um, it's essentially private but it can be accessed by uh, any subclasses. But we've not got any inheritance going on yet. We've just got the one person class. So um, just prove, you, prove to you that if we make this access modifier public, we'll be able to see it. P dot and on our list, color has now appeared. It's a field, um, but it's good practice to try and keep those private so we will do we'll only access our properties via our methods so turn it private again it's not on the list of it of things that we can see it's not accessible from outside of the class and um, so to make it accessible to or to do something useful and um, we're going to make a method public and I'm, it's going to be a boolean um, so it's going to return a boolean value this and we're asking a question, is infected? And this will return color equals equals color, spell the American way, dot red. Now, what is this actually going to return? Well, it's returning the comparison between color, our property in the class, and the color red. And it's saying, does, does this property equal red, true or false? So it's returning to us a Boolean value, true or false. So over here, we can do an if statement and say, if p dot is infected, then we can increment our infected count. Infected count plus plus. The same as writing infected count equals infected count plus one. Else, our healthy count our healthy count needs to increment so every time we go through this, this for loop of people, um, we're counting up how many of are infected and healthy. <coughs> and the last thing to do would be to um, update the labels accordingly. So we've got the healthy people label. And we want to set that equal to, or we want to set the text of it equal to um just remind ourselves so it just says healthy people and then call on the number so um here's the string healthy people colon and then we're going to concatenate that string with um the amount of healthy people that we've just counted healthy count and the very similar thing for the um, infected count. So infected, did I go and change that? 
no, I'm a terrible person, that stayed as label 2, so I needed to remember to change this, uh, the name of this label, so it's more useful. Um, good identifier names are helpful when you're coding. So we're going to go for infected people, um, and then LBL, so that I, when I'm coding, I know that that's the label without having to check it again. And it just says infected people, colon, and then the number. So we're going to do the same thing here. So infected people label now appears, changing the text of it, equal to infected people. And then plus infected count. <coughs> Excellent. So if we give this a run, hopefully we should see that those changes we run our simulation. And we'll definitely know for sure then um, when we've got no healthy people left in our simulation. So if we run our simulation now, we've got the 249, um, which is going to be right, and the infected people 1. And we run this simulation. The infected people count goes up. Uh, I'm not going to count um, all 70 of them, supposedly. It looks about right. And the healthy people are going down. And it's you can see it's quite dramatic when we see it. Um, when we see it in numbers. The rise of infected people is so dramatic. Until we get down to 500 infected people, zero healthy people. Same thing occurs. Um, one thing I've noticed uh, with our label stuff, uh, when we reset and if the timer is not active, the timer is the only time in which the healthy people and the infected people labels change. So that's something that we can correct um, and make sure they change when we um when we reset as well um and they're, they're going to be resetting to their defaults uh, they're going to be to however many people there are minus one for the amount of healthy people and then um however many and um, one infected person when we press, press reset so i'm just going to copy what we had before um but instead of instead of using variables there, I'm just going to type in one because uh, sorry, not one there. We are going to use variables for the healthy people because the healthy people will be um, however many people we've got on the track bar. Um, but the infected people, they will only be one when we press reset. It's always that last person. That make our <coughs> Healthy people, infected people, reset. Labels look a bit better. So change this and then reset. It changes accordingly. Um, sorry, I should have reduced the healthy people by one because we only have 464 people, but this is telling me that we've got 464 healthy people and then one infected, which is not quite right. Um, so I just need to make that minus one. Um, and make sure that it does 
does the subtraction before trying to concatenate it with the string for healthy people. So just put it in brackets there. <coughs> So yeah, 250, 249, uh, we'll select a different amount, so two, oh, so 430, uh, yeah, 429 are healthy, one is infected, and we run the simulation, and that rapidly changes as the number of infected people arises. Until they're all infected. Try it with smaller numbers and a larger form. See what we get. 60 people. Expand the form and reset it. So 59 health people, one person infected. Um, that infected pe person is managing to avoid. Not there though. They've hit somebody else. They've come into contact with somebody else. <coughs> Who is now. Um, coming in contact with others and they're coming in contact with others so every one infected people is all of a sudden infecting so many other healthy people and we're seeing a much more dramatic rise as we've got more and more healthy people uh, infected people sorry and we've just got the one healthy person left now on this side of the screen um, don't imagine them to stay that healthy for too long and um, there they are, they've gone. And we'll do 500. Same simulation. And away goes the infection. Lots of people infected, spreading rapidly. Less than 50 healthy people left, or uninfected people, uh, down to three, two of them are down here, and last person holding out, and they've gone. Excellent, so this video, we've been infecting people, and we can see that it even early on into our simulation here, um, not having any sort of prevention in place, um, like we're trying to establish social distancing. Without social distancing, this uh, infection is spreading rapidly. One person there, not moving about much, but they've come into contact with somebody else. That's it. Fantastic. Next time we'll try and implement some social distancing um, and trying to include some other object oriented techniques like um, inheritance and polymorphism. So it might be a long video, that one, just to make sure we get those points across. Hope your simulation's going well. Thank you.